please be safe to use on my eyes so I can post this video <laughs> a little bit stingy. <laughs> I don't recommend that. <laughs> what is up guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a full face of Asian owned beauty. Not that long ago, I did a full face of black owned beauty. I got some comments asking me to do a full face of Asian owned beauty and I was like, I can absolutely do that. Some of my favorite brands, some of my favorite formulas happen to be Asian owned brands. So I'm excited to share all these things with you. Some of them will be very familiar to you. Some of them might not be, I don't know. And I also, <laughs> fully recognize that um, Asian and Asian American is a really, really excruciatingly broad term that some people might not identify with and so I might misidentify those things. Um, and for that reason, I welcome any correction in the comments um, as I speak about these brands, about overrepresentation, crash, underrepresentation. Um, it's so much better, I've learned, for me to come out and be vulnerable and be like, here are the things that I think I know, than to stand on the sidelines and be afraid of misstepping or misspeaking because I would rather learn. So anyway, I'm gonna move y'all in and we will kind of talk through all of these things and why I love them. It's gonna be a really fun face of makeup. Like, this is happening, okay? This is Vesca Orchid and this is happening. Like, we're gonna get some pink, we're gonna get really tan, we're gonna get really gold. It's gonna be really, really fun. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the other reason that I wanted to make a video like this is just because <sighs> the conversation around Asian Americans and Asians in general in the news lately has been just a lot of bad news. And I'm not going to re-traumatize anybody today. The point of this video is to lift up the beauty and the art and the individuality and the creative energy that is contributed to the beauty industry by Asian creators because these are some of the most exquisite formulas ever. They are innovative, they are crazy cool, super unique. So. Anyway, I'm going to start with something that I've only used a couple of times. And I ordered a few other things from them and they haven't all worked, but this is the brand, I think you just say CLE. I don't think it's clay, but it would be like, you know, like clay to poe or something, I don't know. CLE, um, and this is the Radiant CCC Cream, Micro Capsule Technology Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++. And this is in the shade light, but it's one of those color adjusting CC creams. So it's white and it's got these little tiny, like they said, micro capsules in it. And then when you put it on your skin, and I don't wanna to do too much because it has pretty substantial coverage because it's, I think it's mineral sunscreen. So it is opaque. What? Are you witnessing that? That is so neat. That is so neat. I don't know, man. It might be one of those things where it only changes to one color instead of being, you know, adaptive to your skin but it matches my skin. Light is a good match. What a fascinating formula. Ooh, what does that smell like? Ooh, that's really familiar. Ah, oh, I hate being that influencer. It's a really familiar smell and I'm like not describing it to you. Mm, it's natural, but it's perfumey too. Look at how nice that is. Granted, not enough to be your entire face of sunscreen, but I am already wearing sunscreen underneath this. Okay, and it is both mineral and chemical. So it is titanium dioxide, 8.88%, octanoxate, which is not my skin's favorite thing in the world, 7%, and octosalate, 3%. So, you know. Not for me, maybe every single day because octanoxate does, uh, it just irritates my skin over time, but still absolutely beautiful if that doesn't bother your skin. The next thing that I'm gonna go in with, and this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say, um, I don't totally know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I was thinking about all of my concealers and I was like, do I have anything by an Asian owned company? Like M Cosmetics doesn't make one, Patrick Ta doesn't make one yet. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that the founder of Kosa's is like Southwest Asian, she's Iranian. And you guys tell me, my Iranian friends out there, tell me if you self-identify as Asian or, if, I mean, I know that like, the, I will go ahead and put makeup on while I talk about this. I watched John Oliver's episode recently where he was talking about how the word that we use, Asian American, is, um, you know, kind of in itself or very in itself reductive because it 
it basically like over categorizes an enormous and vast and varied um, group of cultures that, you know, the, the, the food and the traditions and the religions and the histories and the everything that, um, you know, differs literally like town to town in some of these places. And have you seen Asia? It's a lot. It's a lot of places. And then there's also, you know, Pacific Islanders and things like that. And it's like, you know, it, it sort of glazes over in a lot of ways the, well, the individuality and the uniqueness. And um, I think that he even talked about in the show that it was like kind of by design. Um, and, you know, if you are on the census, like I think that someone who is Iranian, Iranian American, has to elect that they're Asian. And, that's, and that doesn't really like, satisfy their cultural heritage in terms of reporting that kind of thing. And, you know, the fact that the government doesn't really care <laughs> doesn't really help either. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, the, I don't know, I have a lot to learn, obviously. Like, I grew up with a very, like, diverse group of people, and I still, like, don't know that much about this stuff because it has always been encouraged that these cultures try so hard to assimilate and um, they've been praised for assimilating. And we actually learned too about something called orientalization in art school and in humanities study as well, because geographically the Western world is so far from the Eastern world, the communication was carried back and forth through a very, very rudimentary game of telephone for very, you know, many, many centuries. Like once we discovered, you know, that area of the world. And so it was just kind of, you know, a bunch of white dudes on boats bringing stuff back and being like, yeah, this is how the Asians live and X, Y, and Z. And it was all just basically being viewed through that colonial lens and being completely just malformed, you know? And the ideas getting passed back and forth over the centuries, back and forth, it, it did, you know, it is mainly Americans kind of over-interpreting those kinds of things, um, you know, or Europeans interpreting them and sort of reducing, fetishizing um, Asian culture. But also, it has kind of had really cool effects in, uh, you know, the other way around. You look at something like K-pop, and there is a huge amount of, like, English language and, like, American influence there because they have so many fans in America. It's very complicated. It has its really beautiful sides and it has its really ugly sides. I guess all I'm trying to say is it is the oldest and longest history in the entire world. So, um, we should recognize that. All right, moving to Patrick Ta here. I'm going to tan myself to the gods real quick. I'm going to start with the powder bronzer. I just want to look fierce today, you know? The tan. This is the She Statuesque uh, Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. They told me I did. I emailed my contact to Patrick Ta. She is delightful. And uh, I asked her if they could send me the eyeshadow palette and she said that they would, but I didn't, I haven't gotten it yet. I, I wonder if they forgot. <laughs> hmm. Um, if so, I will just buy it because it's very interesting. It's got two creams in it and the rest are powders. And I just love that Patrick Ta, like that's his thing. He doesn't just consider, you know, texture within the construct constructs, constraints of the way that people are used to seeing and having beauty presented to them. He's just like, hey, you know, this seems a little weird to you, but try it on for size. And he has actually, just by virtue of me, like having his products in my hands, changed the way that I think about putting on my makeup. Like that's a pretty big thing to be able to do as just like a brand owner and a product creator. All of these formulas are so stinking innovative. That Kosas concealer is one of my favorite concealers ever. That CLE, this, this was just awesome. Like it's awesome, it's so pretty. Um, and all of these are like that. M Cosmetics, her colors, I'm not gonna get into too much M Cosmetics today because I could just do a full face of M Cosmetics. Like she has something almost for everything. And um, you know, I've done two videos like that, maybe three, you know, it's just, it's a very easy thing. Like she has tons and tons and tons of products. So I'll have a few things from her. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're bronzed, quite, quite bronzed. And then I'm also gonna go in with some 
Contour. This is the Thrive original bronzer brush, and I think it works great for creams. And I think this one they still make. They discontinued the bigger one, the blush one. And there is a whole world of K-beauty out there as well that I don't really dabble in because most of their stuff is really fragranced that uh, will kind of irritate my skin. And also when we're talking about um, foundations, the shade ranges are often not very good um, because they don't, I mean, I don't know, is that, is it racist to say like they're mainly catering to a Korean audience, that Korean people have a smaller range of skin tones? Am I excusing that? I don't know. I just look at it and I know that they have a smaller, smaller shade ranges in a lot of their products and that's why I don't use them. So you guys tell me if I'm being racist. <laughs> I'm, I'm vulnerable. Like, I'm just like, you know what? You can't fear being wrong. Fear, fearing being wrong is what keeps you from doing anything. God, those formulas are so good. They're so stinking easy. Ah, oh, oh, I love it. Like, I think that this contour doesn't really have a whole lot of like opaque whiteness behind it. It's just the right color and it's kind of translucent. So when it goes on the skin, my skin shows through. Mm, it just looks healthy. He really, really knows how to formulate for like summertime tan, you know? Okay, moving into Tower 28. This is my favorite shade that came out with the last release. It might be my favorite shade of all of them. This is the shade After Hours, but we have to be so careful with it. It's not specifically made for my skin tone, you know? It's really, really deep and very richly pigmented. And so um, I'm just gonna whisper that onto my skin. See, I mean, that's barely anything. Oh. But on me, especially if I kind of put it up here, like, like a K-beauty technique, it looks very much like I've been out in the sun and I got maybe a little too much sun, you know? Still got my freckles showing through. How lovely is that? You know, and it goes on your, I barely touched that and it still t picked up a ton of pigment. You can put this on your lips. It does actually translate pretty well, but I have a plan for my lips that you guys know about, but beautiful color and a very, very pretty balminess. In fact, I think that this formula works less well on the cheeks built up because it was formulated so well for the lips. And that's why I do prefer the deeper shade is because I don't have to put as much on. And so I don't end up with that kind of gummy thing on my cheeks. So I'm going for a really sheer wash hair because I am gonna go in with another shade as well, but I'm gonna do my lips first before I do that because I wanna make sure that it's balanced. I very often, you know, just go ham on my cheeks and my eyes and then I go for like a clear lip gloss because then I don't have to think about it. But if I'm gonna go for some more punch on a lips, I really need to like bring that into the equation ahead of time. So another Asian owned brand that everyone needs to know about, if you haven't heard me talk about this already a lot, this is Phytosurgeons. And I'm going to start with Potent Petal. This is just a, you know, an unbelievably beautiful texture for an eyeshadow. Oh, and look at how it like brings that pink out of my cheeks with the, the shift. It's like a, a peach shift, gold shift pink kind of eyeshadow formula and, um, or eyeshadow color. And it spreads out really, really beautifully. Like, look at how it glows where the light hits it, but then it's not really imposing as you spread it out. It's not like, oh God, what do I do with all of this? Because it does actually dry down. It spreads out enough that you could control it with a brush too. But you can also build it up in a really, really nice way. I don't wanna build it up too much because I'm also going to put the Vesca on top of it. But just a little bit underneath my eyes. As cream shadows go, these are just some of the most exquisite formulas. Beautiful shades, absolutely no complaints on these. They are so flipping easy. Their blushes are beautiful too. So I have a little bit of Amber Aura here as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do that because I still wanna kinda of pull in a little bit of the tan. So I'm just using that to get a really subtle shadow in the crease. Nothing particularly precise. Obviously I'm using my finger. <laughs> Can't get super precise with your finger, but smudgy, smudgy. And then 
I'm gonna top that off with the Vesca Moonlit Dream Cream Shadow in Karina, which is so pretty, it makes me wanna cry. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Liquid gold. Who gave you the right? Karina. Who gave you permission to be that beautiful? Okay, it's just exquisite, okay? And you can let it dry down all the way and then you can manipulate the edges with a brush and just blend it. But like, do not be afraid of piling this up because it dries all the way down. Putting it under my eye, maybe a little bit in my eyes. Yeah, I meant to do that. And I'm just gonna take something flat. I got lucky on that one. And blend underneath my eyes. Really get that like lived in thing going. Ew. You know, I haven't done this look all together before. It was just in my head and it's going exactly as I planned. Now I'm also going to try and use this. This is the Essence Moonlighter Cushion from CLE. I should Google it. Is it CLE or clay? And all you get is clay to poe. That's really annoying. Anyway, if you know, please tell me. But I wanna put this on a BB brush because this thing is not screwing around. I ordered it in the shade Apricot Tinge and no offense, but like, where's the apricot? Light on the tinge, I'm gonna just say it. And so I want to just take a little bit of that and use it on my inner corner. Please be safe to use on my eyes so I can post this video <laughs> a little bit stingy. <laughs> I don't recommend that. Oh, how did I get it all the way around my eyes? That's okay, that's what more concealer's for. Um, I don't recommend that. Um. Eyeliner, I know that I, oh, that's right. I did get something out for eyeliner. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're doing this. This is the M Cosmetics liquid liner. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I suck at this. <laughs> and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and do some brown liquid eyeliner real quick. Oh, hello. And cosmetics, again, that's fine. <laughs> that's starting to smell kind of weird. I've had this a while. Her brow products are so lovely. She does such a great job on them. I love this teeny tiny wand. There's a lot of hold to this formula. My only thing is I wish I'd gotten a deeper shade, just slightly, this is the blonde one. For all this hold, I wish it just had a little more darkness to it. Yeah, we'll do that for now. Here comes the fun part. We're gonna do my lips. I'm just gonna put this on and then we're gonna go in with all of my finishing touches. So this is Orchid from Vesca. And if, <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with this formula, it has the most gorgeous slip to it. It's very much like Fit Glow, thinner than Fit Glow. It smells kind of nice. Um, a little bit, I guess, thicker than the Rare Beauty, a lot like the old original Rowan. And that color's just a freaking party. Oh, it feels so good. Very healthy and pretty and bouncy and it stays put. So, I mean, not like a long wearing, you know, dry down lipstick, but like it's not soupy. This is the part where I said I was going to let my lips determine the saturation of my blush here. So I have this. This is Beach Please in Happy Hour from Tower 28. And I can't find my words because I can't find my brush. There it is. Mm -hmm. I love pink. I love pink. Yep, it's getting pretty Barbie pretty quick. And you're like khaki, only two blushes today? Yeah, you know, like I said, I don't typically wear something on my lips. So I think that, you know, that's what we call enough. And I haven't put on any mascara yet. 
and I probably need more brow. So I'm gonna use the M Cosmetics mascara. Not the biggest fan of this just because it builds so slowly. I'm impatient. But it is a tubing mascara and I do appreciate that about it. And it's much lighter weight than the Thrive, which is my preference. Um, and that's really great for the people who have like trouble holding a curl in their eyelashes. Tell you what though, that second coat on M Cosmetics is not effing around. Like, that first coat is like, really? And the second one is like, whoop -ow. And I, I do have to go with a little bit more brow. Hang on. This is my fault for not owning the M Cosmetics in the right color. Just ignore me. Nothing to see here. Bring the bronzer onto the cheeks, onto the nose. It kind of just puts a little bit more orange into my cheeks instead of everything being Barbie pink. It's nice. I'm gonna move y'all out and we will chat about these products all at once. Wow. It's cute. I like it. Let's chat through these products briefly. I am so pleased by this CC Seed Cream from CLE. I love the magic of when it goes on and you know, octanoxate is something that my skin doesn't totally love, but that is super, super personal. The finish on this is gorgeous. You can really wear it at any coverage level. They don't recommend putting that much on. They actually say put on a small amount. So um, it does have coverage because it has the titanium dioxide in it. And so, uh, you know, always wear a different sunscreen underneath it, like another sunscreen, but this is still really beautiful, like really beautiful. So easy to work with. You can tell that there's just a little bit more technology in this than a regular skin tint. The concealer, obviously, Kosa's is, you know, one of my top, top concealers. This is news to absolutely no one. I've loved this ever since the moment that it uh, arrived on the market. I also, like, this is just such an easy thing for me to talk about. The Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I think this is just, oh, it's so perfect, at least for me. Someone who wants to fake a tan and have it not look like I'm trying to do something crazy, you know what I mean? I'm not orange, I'm not, it doesn't look, like it looks like I'm wearing makeup, sure, but it, it's that Patrick Ta vibe, you know, that just like healthy bronzed skin thing. And I have a lot of trouble achieving that. These colors are really dialed in for that. And the formula is lovely. It is gorgeous. I can go nuts with this stuff. Um, you know, do I need a, a real tan? to kind of like keep going. Yes, and if I were going to an event, I would just like, you know, bronze my whole chest or something. This is just such a lovely formula. I love this so much. I really love almost everything that I have tried from Patrick Ta. Yeah, everything except the liquid lip. That was it. Tower 28. Another formula that I don't talk about enough, but I think that it is, like I said, because it was formulated so specifically to be a lip and cheek that it is so emollient sometimes that when I wear the shades that have less pigment or are lighter in pigment, like the rosy tones that look like they were meant for me, I end up with too much product on my face. I, if you find that that's an annoying thing that happens to you with these two, Go with some of the more saturated tones, uh, happy hour and after hours being the ones that I use today. And you have to use so little and then you don't end up with as much makeup on your face because it's so, so pigmented. And also they are so pigmented that obviously they were designed uh, to be able to show up on deep skin tones as well. They're just lovely. Phytosurgeons, a lovely company to support and thank God they make lovely products to begin with. I want to spread phytosurgeons all over my face, all over my body. It's just one of the most delicious uh, textures of a formula. These eyeshadows just <laughs> do the work for you. And once you are paying in USD to Canadian dollars, like Canadian dollars are not even that expensive, but USD they're like $17. It's not crazy. And um, the colors are just so utterly beautiful. So yeah, can never say enough about phytosurgeons. Can also never say enough about Vesca. Talk about innovative formulas. They make some products that I can't compare to anything else. This formula in particular, and yes, I can compare this to other formulas, like I did, I you know said the things that I thought it was like, but um, these colors are off the charts. They're so awesome, like they're so interesting. M Cosmetics also, uh, I think her, what's it called? Her lip gloss, her true, not true gloss, is it true gloss? I think her true gloss is also a very, very similar kind of slippy formula to this. So they both have some of the most nuanced shades that you can get in this really cool liquid lip balm formula. And I just absolutely love this. They were nice enough after I bought one of these and a bunch of other things from them to send me all of them. There is a swatching video where I show you guys all of them and I would highly recommend watching that if you are interested in these because the colors really run the 
the gamut. They're very, very cool. And yeah, this is just liquid magic. You can see it on my eyeballs right now and it is so long wearing. Like you can wear this to an event that's outside or something like that and you know, you might lose some of that like wet luster over the course of the day. It's gonna wear in a little bit, but it doesn't disappear, it doesn't flake off and there's no fallout or anything like that and it is it is truly a dialed in beautiful formula. The M Cosmetics eyebrow that I was using that I chucked across the room somewhere, obviously, um, I really, really like it. It has an amazing amount of hold. It has a lovely little applicator. I just wish that I had gotten it in a deeper shade. And like I said, the Pick Me Up Mascara from M Cosmetics also, it's a really lovely formula if you want a tubing mascara that is not going to weigh your lashes down. I prefer the faster dry time on Thrive. I like the really, really fast volume that the Thrive builds, but this does build a really effective tube. So the, the actual technology really works. Is that everything? I don't love this Essence Moonlighter cushion, but I think it's because I got it in the wrong shade. I was misled by uh, the Apricot Tinge name because fam, that's not, I mean, that's not apricot tinge. It went on kind of like, oh, I already have a swatch of it. It looks purple. It's like a, it's like a silver shift purple. It's a, not what I expected at all. So um, yeah, that is the vibe. I will list everything down below. Vesca gave me a discount code. I think it's just khaki 10, 10% off of your order site-wide. I don't get anything from that, but you know, use it because they're great. Yeah, guys, if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know down below, but mainly if you have answers for me, if there are brands that I should buy from that are Asian owned, if you are part of the very broad Asian community and there are ways you prefer to be spoken about in videos like this going forward, let me know. I want to accommodate those things and I want to learn. But the main thing I wanted to do today was to just celebrate some beautiful beauty items that are from Asian brand owners. So that is all we did today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a little bit different too. I did, you know, something just slightly different. Um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.